much. Thank you. So in three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the February 5th, 2024 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams live on the, w, excuse me, on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and then seconding a, a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Walsh, Ms. Pitts, or Ms. Howie if you must leave by leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon, Ms. Times filling in. It's actually Ms. Gover who is assisting this afternoon. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gover. Thank you. Ms. Grandpong? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Dr. Silverboy? Ms. Velasquez? Present. Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Thank you. Ms. Gover, please call the roll to determine the presence. I've already said that. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Gover. Please call the roll to determine that which staff members are present in this meeting. Ms. Howie? Ms. Howie. Here, here. Ms. Walsh? Here. Thank you. Dr. Grimm? Dr. Grimm? Mr. McCall? Here. Mr. Conley? Here. Mr. Dixit? Present. Ms. Feeney? Present. Mr. Handy? Present. Ms. James? Present. Dr. Whitstead? Present. Dr. Hetrick? Ms. Onojala, Ms. Stansberry, Mr. Taylor, present, and Ms. Hahn, present. Thank you. Committee members, Ms. James has just advised staff of a scheduling conflict. Her item will be handled first, and that's item B2, policy 0200. Precepts, beliefs, and values. Ms. James, please proceed. Thank you. With respect to precepts, beliefs, and values of the Baltimore County Public Schools, the Division of Human Resources has no edits to the policy statement or the guiding principles. Thank you, Ms. James. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes or actually no changes to policy 0200? Okay, hearing none, if there are no corrections or no objection, policy 0200 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Ms. Pumphrey and members of the committee, may Ms. James and Mr. McCall be excused? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kali. Thank you. And next on our agenda is item B1, policy 0100 equity. Um, and for that, um, Ms. Mr. Handy will um, present the policy. Mr. Handy, please proceed. Thank you, Ms. Pomfrey. Uh, so for policy 0100, uh, the changes proposed by the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency are as follows. In paragraph 1A, policy statement replaced his slash her with their to conform with the policy review handbook guidance recommending the use of gender inclusive language. Uh, secondly, remove section two definitions and section three standards to focus the policy on the Board of Education's vision, principles and position, and repurpose policy execution statements to the superintendent's rule. Uh, third, insert a new section implementing rule and place a hyperlink to superintendent's rule 0100 in board docs to respond to the public works recommendation 8-30. 
And then lastly, inserted the Oxford comma where indicated in conformity with the policy review committee's editing conventions. And that concludes the changes proposed by the Department of Equity and Culture Proficiency. Thank you, Mr. Handy. Is there any discussion on recommended policy changes to policy 0100? I do have a quick question. Um, so it, it, my understanding is that we are removing um, section two and three because those items are more suitable for the rule instead of the policy. Is that correct? Uh, correct, Ms. Pumphrey. Um, that was the basis for the recommendation from my department, correct? Okay, thank you. Uh, this and I saw a hand from Ms. Uh, Stolowski, uh, Ms. Yes, Parker, Ms. and Ms. Ms. Trump. Thank you. Thank you for um, suggesting the corrections. And this is just open for discussion. Um, in terms of paragraph 1A, I don't know if changing the language to his, her, their would be the most inclusive. Um, I'm just you know, kind so of throwing Ms. that out there for possible discussion. Ms. Stileski, his and her is, his slash her is in uh, brackets. That means it's deleted language. Right, and it would be replaced with there. Yes, ma'am. Right, so, um, you know, just one thought, you know, if the purpose is to be, you know, most inclusive, would it be the most inclusive to have all three, his, her, and their. I leave that to the subject matter experts. Right, absolutely. I agree. Mr. Handy? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Um, so, I guess in, in the spaces in which we operate, we do tend to default to their um, as most inclusive. I do understand what you're saying, Mr. Lusky. Um, Ms. Howie, I asked if you can perhaps help me with this as well. Also want to stay in alignment with um, the handbook conventions, which from what I was reading, it looks like we've been using just there to be most gender inclusive, which is also in alignment again with, um, I would say the work of my of my department and me. That is the pronoun we've been using, um, but what is the committee's pleasure? Because we can also use the noun students. Mm. In other in other policies that we're making where we're making these changes as they come up with this gender inclusive language, have we, have we been making the change to there consistently throughout other policies that we reviewed? Yes, ma'am. Anybody else have any comments? This is um, Mrs. Harvey. I have a question. Yes, Ms. Harvey. So we are proposing to remove those two sections, definitions um, and standards, which are more on the operational side. Approving this today is approving that we're going to remove those and replace them. Or are we saying that with the removal of those sections, we are forwarding this policy to the board as is? I'm sorry, I don't know that I understand so, your question. I, I know, I was very jumbled. <laughs> I thought I heard that we were removing those two sections to include um, something else. But if I misheard, that's fine. I just want to be clear that if we approve this policy today, it is just with the, the change in the in the his or her to there, the removal of definitions and standards and um, the insert of the link once the rule is in place. In other words, we're not proposing any other changes to the language of this policy. I don't believe that staff and equity and cultural proficiency is recommending any substantive changes to uh, section one, section, what would be the new section two, and the new section three. I do not believe that there are any substantive changes being recommended. Yes. Okay. Ms. Howie is correct. 
Okay. So I just really want to be on record with I, I thought that we would be talking about some more substantive changes to the language, given all of our recent conversations on equity and our workshops that that part of this process would be looking at the current language and um, making some substantive changes to how it's presented. I can't say I would be in favor of forwarding this to the board as is. Ms. Parker, I do have, sorry, yes, yes, please proceed, Mr. Hart. I mean, excuse me, Mr. Handy, I apologize. No problem. So I understand Ms. Harvey's question. Um, I guess just for the operations, the operationalizing, I guess, bringing this to you all today, um, I actually submitted the recommendations before our first workshop. So our first workshop was on January 10th. Um, so every, everything was submitted because I because of the workflow it had to be submitted before that date. Um, yeah. I also believe that if we think about some of the discussions that occurred, um, I believe those can be included in the rule in a way to uh, frankly hold staff accountable uh, to yes, experience that, the rule. That was part of my question about removing this, the, the those two sections, because I, there's a lot in there that needs to be included, in, but I think included in the rule and not in the policy. So I wanted to make clear that we're not necessarily, we're not removing this to be completely out of the equity. It's just going to sort of move to the rule or in some way be um, included in the rule because it's more of an implementation and not um, an actual policy. That was my understanding. Um, I did have a couple minor recommendations based on our discussion in our equity training or workshop, which was um, the, uh, under Section 3B, where it says um, all the students. We talked about maybe changing all the students to each student, and I thought that was a good place to do that, as well as um, I think it was paragraph Section 1, um, paragraph A, where it says all students to change that to each student. That was just something I thought about based on our conversations in the workshop. OK, yep, understood. Does any other committee members have any comments regarding that? Ms. Humphrey, which line? Um, it's line seven, I believe. Line seven, line 10, and line 28. Thank you. And I believe Ms. Um, Frenpong has her hand up, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Brentpong. Hi. So um, I do share some of the concerns that Ms. Harvey raised. So Mr. Handy, thank you for bringing this to us. Um, but there is so much like, good material in that in those sections. So for example, with um, section that has definitions in it, um, as the board did their equity training, I think that information was helpful so that there was a grounding and understanding of um, what it was that we were doing. And so not to say that it can't be repeated in the rules, but I do think it was helpful um, having it in the policy. And that's what the board could also reference as we um, continue through our equity training. And then the current section three, um, that is the standards. I guess my question was, do we need to have every single one of those removed? Um, for example, is it possible to just do some rewor rewording of those um, different um, standards so that it relates more to the board? And then you could again take some of that material that was more operational and put it into the rule. So for example, with S, could we just reword that so it's only including policies, which is something again specific to board and board governance. Um, but for other items, um, again, just the material that was in it as far as, to, I've got too many screens up, sorry. Let me see if I can get back to the, I can't get back to it right now. Okay, um, but yeah, that was just my thought. So is there a way to um, just do some rewording so that we can capture some of that at a high level um, for board policy and then, you know, take the, the details and put that within within the rule. And I think the other part of this that's difficult is because 0100 does not have a rule. I don't know if it's possible to, and this is something that also came up in our last board meeting, is really kind of looking at it side by side so that we have a full understanding of, of um, this policy 
at that high level from board governance and then also the rule. Um, and I say that just because this is such an important um, policy. Thank you. Also, we had discussed in the workshop, um, I believe this was the part that we discussed about running this through the equity committee as well for them to take a look and give input is um, am, I rem am I remembering that correctly? You are. And is that something that we can do before we bring this to the full board? It's a committee's pleasure. The, the but it would have to come back then to PRC uh, if there are suggested edits that uh, the equity committee has. Comments from committee members. What do you think about of that about that suggestion? Sending this through the equity committee before it comes back to us again for a for a first reader. This is board member from Pong, so I would agree with that. I don't know if I need to make a motion, so I would make a motion um, if needed. I would make a motion that um, this policy be sent to equity committee. OK, I agree with that, so I second that Ms. Friend Pong. This is uh, Brenda Savoy speaking, Dr. Savoy. So members of the committee, I would recommend that when you send the policy to, if you choose to send the policy to the equity committee, you provide some sort of guidance as to what your expectations are that the committee scope of the committee's review would be. Does that language need to go into the motion or um, just send along with sent along with the motion? It's preferable to to place it in the motion that just makes it clear and the public then also knows what the committee has done. Uh, but if the committee's not quite sure, then uh, it can certainly be sent at a later date. Uh, but I would strongly recommend that you at least let the committee know what your expectations are. Okay. So I can amend my motion if needed for sections two and three specifically. I think that's where most of the discussion has been. So actually the motion belongs to the assembly now. <laughs> so. Okay, so we have uh, the motion on the table is to refer, hopefully I have this correct. The motion on the table is to refer policy 0100 to the equity committee for review before bringing, before being, bringing, before bringing it back to the PR, to PRC for review. That's what I heard. Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. Do we need a second? I can second it. You have it's a already second. second. Yes, okay. It's already seconded. So at this point, we'll, we will do. Um, just a second, sorry. You can ask if there is any objection. Is there any objection? Any objection to the motion? And then the effect of having no objection. So hearing none, policy 0100 will be sent to the equity committee. Sorry, I'm just writing this down. OK, hearing none, policy 0100 will be sent to equity committee for further review. OK. And then we will send additional instructions to, to the equity committee. Next on our, on our agenda is item B3, policy 1270, parent and family engagement. Um, that is Ms. Oinawa, I believe. And I believe Ms. Han, uh, but members of the committee, may uh, Mr. Handy be excused? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Handy. All right, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I think it's. It is a Suhan, and I think I'm going to um, speak for um, the policy 1270, uh, which establishes the board's parent and family engagement policy required by the Every Student Succeeds Act. And this policy validates the Board of Education's commitment to meaningful partnerships among schools, families, caregivers, and community members to enhance student achievement through engagement. 
And so staff is recommending no changes and requesting that policy 1270 be readopted. Sorry, just a second. I lost my screen. I apologize. No worries. OK, is there any discussion on the recommended changes or no changes to policy 1270? Uh, this is Mrs. Harvey. I, I think I just have a clarifying question because this policy mentions board goals and our board goals are in the process of being developed and haven't been um, approved by the full board. So is this board goals in the sense of general goals or is this supposed to be related to our literal board goals? <laughs> Ms. Han, do you want me to answer? Yes, oh, thank you. So um, Ms. Harvey, this is a general statement. Um, and as you see uh, from the statement itself, uh, that is something that the board does value. You do value parent engagement and community engagement. So um, the subtitle does not refer to your specific goals that you've adopted, simply goals that the board has uh, for community and parent engagement. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear because I didn't want there to be any um, conflict or co incongruence in the goals. Thank you. I also had a question. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the in the in the policy or the analysis. It mentioned um, a plan. It refers to a plan by the Maryland State Department of Education. Um, so my question is, um, is it necessary to why or why would it be necessary to have this policy in addition to the plan? Is there a difference because it refers to the plan at the well, end of the policy? The plan is what um, ESSA and MSDE actually will accept when they do the audit. Um, and the plan does not have to be, uh, it has to be reviewed by parents and families yearly. And we actually, we do it throughout the year, um, but uh, it's not like the policy where it has to go through the Board of Education every year. OK, so the, there is a, there is a benefit to having the policy in addition to just having the plan, correct? Um, I, yes. It's always better to have more than one resource for families. OK. And the plan um, goes into a little bit. It's not as broad. Um, and it's, it is on our website, Family and Community Engagement website. Um, so you can look at it if you would like to. We developed it in partnership with Title I staff and then of course families. OK, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm sorry, my screen's black. Just a second. I don't know what's going on with my computer today. OK, sorry about that. Any other questions or comments? You're doing great. <laughs> I'm having a day, I'm telling you. <laughs> OK, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 1270 is moved forward to first reader as presented. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Thank you. Uh, committee members, may Ms. Hahn and Ms. Onanjala be excused? Yes, thank you. Thank you, colleagues. OK, next on our agenda is item B4, policy 1280 boundary changes. Thank you. Fix it. Good afternoon. So what we have in front of you is policy 1280 that outlines the board's authority to establish school attendance areas and make changes to school boundaries. There are no substantive changes and we are asking for readoption. The only changes that we have made revised and updated the order of related policies and inserted a hyperlink to superintendent's rule 1280 in board docs to respond to the public works recommendation 8-30. Also as part as, as a reference point, uh, there are changes to the rule that are in the draft form and will be shared later on. 
OK, is there any discussion on the recommended policy 1280? I do know that in the past we had some, sorry, I do know that in the past we had some um, concerns about the uh, communication as far as the boundary and who was included to make sure that we engage all of the public, even those who often um, don't participate sort of intentionally reach out to those areas. Um, but my understanding is that is something that would be um, involved in the rule because it's implementation and not the policy. And with some changes coming for the rule, I would, for, you know, in the rule, I would expect that those um, those issues would be discussed in the rule itself. Do you think that's uh, correct, Mr. Dixit? Yes, your statement is absolutely correct. OK, and did I have another board, another committee member who had a question? Robin, Ms. Oh, Ms. Sorry. I thought I saw Ms. Rampong's hand. OK, sorry, Ms. Rampong. OK, thank you. Um, in alignment with what you were saying, that was my question. And so I didn't know if we were able to update any of the language. Um, it does talk about developing procedures for school and community involvement, but um, in addition, adding some wording to actual engagement and solicitation. Um, of these community responses. So I guess just being more intentional and being more active in getting um, the responses from the community so that when we have a recommendation come before the board, it's truly reflective of um, community engagement and responses. And that is understood. Ms. Harvey, did you have a question? I, I did probably more of a comment. I do agree with Ms. Frempong that um, that while we understand we're working towards these things as a board, one of the ways we hold ourselves accountable is by the language that we put in our policies. And so I think being intentional about including those specific elements of communication is important, as well as uh, including in the language particularly around the topic of boundaries is including in A, in addition to quality educational uh, opportunities that we include inclusive and equitable uh, as identifiers uh, in, that, in that particular paragraph as we consider how we draw boundaries for BCPS. So we have made uh, several changes to the rule. They are in the process of review by chief operating officer and superintendent. Uh, and I believe that a lot of the concerns raised by the board member uh, uh, has been taken into consideration in making those changes. Mr. Taylor, do you want to add anything to what I just said? I would just agree with you that yes, we have tried to expand in the rule ways to engage the public and we'll review it again and make sure the words that you wanted are included in the language. Right, so I, I appreciate that, but what we're speaking to is the policy, which is the purview of the board and how we as a, what our expectation of ourselves and our performance in the policy is. And so while you are making strides to, to execute those specific things in the rule, I believe the policy should reflect our role in governance, reflect those same aspects uh, on our side as, as you're striving to on your side so that we're really clear uh, what we are seeking to accomplish as a board in our role as governance. And Ms. Harvey, you mentioned inclusive and equitable. Did you want those words added? And if so, where? I did in in uh, policy statement one uh, a where it says the Board of Education establishes school attendance areas in order to provide quality. Equitable and inclusive educational opportunities. For each student. and then the rest continues as is. That would be my recommendation. So I think your chair probably needs a motion. 
Yes. Uh, Ms. Harvey. Yep, I'll make the motion. Thank you. I move, I move to edit uh, board policy 1281 section one paragraph A to uh, state that the Board of Education of Baltimore County Board establishes school attendance areas in order to provide quality, equitable, and inclusive educational opportunities for each student and to promote the efficient use of school facilities and resources. So, Ms. Harvey, just so it's clear, you're amending by adding and striking out, if I heard that correctly. Yes. Yes, so ma'am. I am. By, no, you go ahead. Because you're equitable and inclusive before the words educational opportunities in line eight, and by striking out the word all and including and inserting the word each, and by striking out uh, the S from student. So it would student, so it would be student. Is, is yes. that what? Okay. So moved. <laughs> and do we have a second? A second from Pong. Okay, all in favor of the motion, please answer yes when your name is called. Ms. from Pong? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. Ms. Jalowski? Yes. And Ms. Humphrey? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Um, so the, the affirmative has it and the motion is amended uh, the motion to amend is adopted. We will now vote on wh whether policy 1280 as amended. Sorry. <laughs> we'll move, we'll, we'll, excuse me, we'll move forward as amended. Yes. Board member uh, Pumphrey or Chair Pumphrey, I apologize for the interruption, but I guess in um, alignment with what Ms. Harvey just did, the same thing that I brought up about those words, I'd like to make a motion to incorporate that directly into the policy. So what my motion would be, would be in section 2A, and where it says the superintendent will develop procedures for school and community involvement. In addition to that, we're adding engagement and solicitation. Okay, so is this a second motion to amend? It is. So, um, and could you restate your uh, your motion, please? Just so I have sure. it. Sure, my motion is to amend. Um, it's policy 1280 section 2A um, to include instead of just involvement, engagement and solicitation of community responses in the development of recommendations for all boundary changes. So members of the committee, I'd recommend that you deal with one amendment at a time. I mean, unless the committee has any confusion. If the committee knows what it's doing, then that's fine. If not, I recommend voting on the motion as amended, then going back and amending. OK, and that's where we were, right? I was we were about to vote on the motion as amended. And so just for clarification, if we vote yes to amend it, do we still can we still go back and, and um, amend a second time or do we need to? Do we need to bring it back to the so beginning? Not a, you're not amending the amendment. Well, essentially you are. Um, right. You no, know, you're not amending those words, the, the words that have already been approved. It, it's just okay. easier for um consistency so that okay. you're on one thing at a time you're on one amendment train as opposed to two okay so let's go ahead and do a roll call vote for the first um, motion to amend Ms. Rempo? yes Ms. harvey yes dr savoy yes Ms. galeski yes and Ms. Pumphrey. yes Thank you. And now, Ms. Frempong, your motion to amend would be in order. And you're muted, ma'am. Thank you. 
I would like to move for policy 1280 section 2A to be amended um, to incorporate engagement and solicitation so that um, it would read the superintendent will develop procedures for school and community involvement, engagement and solicitation of all community responses in the development of recommendations for all boundary changes. And do we have a second? I second, this is Mrs. Harvey. Thank you. And can we have a roll, any discussion? Okay, can we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Frempo? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Ms. Stoleski? Yes. Ms. Humphrey? Yes. Thank you. The affirmative has it and the motion to amend is adopted. We will now vote on whether policy 1280, sorry, will move forward as amended. Ms. Gover, please call the roll. Ms. Frempo? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? <laughs> yes. Ms. Jaleski? Yes. And Ms. Comfort? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the affirmatives have it and the, um, excuse me, the policy will move forward, policy 1280 will move forward as amended. And my staff who presented be excused, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Victor. Alex. Thank you. And next on our agenda is item C1, policy 3170, framework for continuous improvement. Policy 3170 was recommitted to PRC by the board on January 23rd, 2024 for discussion and refinement of the policy considering the board's comments. I want staff to have the committee's input before the revisions are returned to us. Any comments? I believe the discussion at the board at the meeting was regarding whether or not um, this policy was necessary um, and also regarding again the difference between the implementation and the rule and the policy itself. Um, sure, so I, I, I can begin with that. I'm Kevin Connolly, Executive Director for Department of Research Accountability and Assessment. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, uh, one of the questions that was asked as well um, with that was whether this is a requirement in COMAR. And under <clears throat> COMAR Code 13A0106, uh, it's Educational Equity in Maryland. There's two components that um, our current equity policy um, does not match. Um, the, to the depth and breadth that the framework for continuous improvement provides. And those two things are um, number three, direct the identification and utilization of resources to provide equitable access to educational opportunities and services by among other steps, the use of disaggregated student data to analyze trends and identify gaps and equitable solutions. And then the second part was part 11, identify the school systems process for analyzing data to develop goals, objectives, strategies, and timelines for the implementation of equitable and culturally competent practices at each school. So um, while the question is, uh, was related to, is this policy still needed and is it required? It is um, a core policy for systemic improvement and directly supports other policies such as equity and <laughs> use of um, data informed decision making to promote uh, system-wide improvement. Okay, thank you. And I have another question. The policy that is on the agenda today that's in, uh, as um, an attachment, has ha was this the original the policy that was brought forward to the board or have changes been made to this before it was brought forward to us? This is the same that was brought to the okay. board. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Anything I'm not remembering from the meeting that we wanted to discuss the reasoning for bringing this back that I'm not recalling. I have a question, Madam Chair, and this is just uh, so that I understand our process. When we have something that is uh, 
directly related to Comar in our policy. Is the Comar reference included? I didn't see it here, um, but that was part of the question in the discussion. So I'm wondering as as a practice, do we include that uh, in the policy information or do we not? So ma'am, some of the I can respond as to our practices. If there is a legal requirement, um, our practice has been to include the legal reference in the policy analysis. There are also times where we include legal references in the body of the policy itself. Thank you. So was the reference to Comor in the policy analysis for this policy? I'm looking at the analysis. I'm just. I do not recall. No, I don't. I don't believe it was. I'm looking at the analysis as well. I see references to other LEAs, but I do not see any reference to Comar. Uh, it was something that you know, we went back following the board meeting on the 24th to look uh, closely at Comar. It's not what I would consider, in my opinion, a requirement, um, but there's parts of Comar that are um, being stated in educational equity that the, that continuous improvement would drive that work. Okay, and is it something that we can add in the policy analysis when it's brought forward to the board, or is that not a practice that we usually follow when it's brought for if it's brought forward to the full board? I don't know that I understand the question. So the the Comar ref, the Comar um, reference, can we add that to the policy analysis before it's brought forward to the full board? We generally do, yes, ma'am. Okay, but it's, it's not it's not there now. And I'm just wondering if that might clarify when it's brought to the full board, if that might help um, answer some of the questions that were brought, why it was brought back to us in the first place. Sure, and perhaps what we'll do is include the specific language, not just the, uh, the bare reference. Okay, thank you. And again, staff wanted to hear from you. Uh, this was recommitted uh, with sort of minimal direction. Uh, so before staff starts working on any adjustments, um, we thought it it wise to uh, find out what the committee's expectations uh, were. Does anybody have any comments on this? I never had anything specific for this myself, um, just the policy analysis, not necessarily the policy, which I mentioned adding Comar just because I thought that might help um, with understanding from other board members that were present at the board meeting and had questions. Um, does anybody else have anything, anything that they would like to, any information they would like to provide to staff? Uh, this is Mrs. Harvey. I think the Comar reference, the language is incredibly helpful uh, in, in guiding the staff in what may be missing from the policy it talks about how we use resources, um, how we use disaggregated data to drive those decisions and maybe being more specific or literal about that in the policy would be helpful. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? And does staff have enough to move forward, Ms. Howie? You're muted. About. What help if I put in my microphone? Um, I think <laughs> that's um, a question best answered by draw staff. <coughs> Could you repeat the question, please? I was just asked if Sorry, just as if staff had enough from us to move forward, um, or do you need any additional information from us? So, um, you know, the two pieces that I'm hearing for feedback from the board include both uh, referencing and using the specific language of Comar, as well as um, in the language of the policy, as well as really detailing the specific actions that are a result of this governance for the policy for continuous improvement. Okay. 
So we do not need to have any motion here because it's going back to staff for um, changes, correct? OK, thank you for clarifying. Is there any additional feedback? I don't believe so. OK, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. And may staff be excused, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Next on our agenda is item C2, artificial intelligence. And for that, I call Ms. Howie. Ms. Howie has agreed to provide the committee with an update about artificial intelligence. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. And perhaps at some future date, there can be a, an artificial, an AI generated uh, general counsel who can help you with all this. But until that time, you, you're stuck with me. So wanted the committee to know about a recent executive order issued by the governor. It was actually issued on the 8th of January. It is in uh, board docs and executive content. It will go um, in public content tomorrow. It was issued on January 8th, and it is titled Catalyzing the Responsible and Productive Use of Artificial Intelligence in Maryland State Government. What the um, executive order uh, does specifically is it creates a sub cabinet that is to look at certain aspects of AI in um, state government, as well as reconfiguring or the, the possible use of new software. Um, and they are asked to provide recommendations to the governor on all matters related to AI. Uh, they're asked to facilitate state statewide coordination on the responsible ethical and productive use of AI. And the members of the sub cabinet, interestingly enough, do not include the state superintendent of schools. Uh, so the secretary of information technology, secretary of budget and management, secretary of general services, secretary of labor, commerce, uh, the director of the governor's office of homeland security, the chief privacy officer, chief data officer, the senior advisor for responsible AI, and then any other member of the governor's executive council at the discretion of the chair. And the chair is the secretary of the Department of Information Technology. Um, each branch is to establish um, and required to uh, cooperate with the sub cabinet um, and to provide data to the sub cabinet. Uh, when this was presented to the press, there was, there was um, emphasis on privacy aspects, uh, but the sub cabinet is also charged with issuing and developing um, a comprehensive action plan for how AI is to be used across state government using the principles that are that you will see in the uh, executive order. Um, again, it was a little bit of a surprise that um, education was not included, but obviously education is affected uh, given that um, the State Department of Education is, you know, an agency of the state. Um, because this is, you know, pretty hot off the presses, I have no um, indication at this point of exactly what the effect will be. But my request to you as a committee is that uh, we press pause for perhaps another three months to see where the committee's, uh, what the committee's direction is and whether or not based on that direction, there need to be um, any sort of policy changes uh, from the board. I would hate to go forward with a policy only to find out from the state that the state is going in a different direction. I doubt it, but I, I simply, um, I'm not like chat GPT, I can't predict. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Haley. I will say I recently was at a workshop that um, had a session completely about AI and talked about policy as well as curriculum. Um, and they pretty much said exactly what you just said, that we may want to press pause right now before formulating any policies because of what's coming down from the state level. Um, so I would second what you said based on uh, the workshop that I attended. Any other discussion or questions for Ms. Howie? This is board member from Pong. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I just I do kind of question that as far as education, no one being involved from education. Do you know if there um, have been given any feedback 
um, I guess, so that education can be incorporated or is we just kind of, because it's almost like a subset, we're just gonna let it play out. It's, I mean, it's so new. Um, the sub cabinet is so new. I, I think they're gonna build the plane in midair and figure out that there are some issues that need to be addressed. Right now, I think what they're looking at are systems across state government, which is why Homeland Security and why data uh, and privacy are involved. But I think they're looking at records across the, the state infrastructure, uh, as opposed to the operations that involve um, delivery of curriculum to our students. I, I don't think that that connection has been made, but I can't predict or I won't, I'd be hesitant to say that it will never be made. I think it will as they get deeper into their study. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? So what I'm hearing is that I feel that as a committee, we um, are heeding your advice and want to press pause on this for a few months to see what happens at the state level. Yes, and I'll report back. We can calendar it for three months from now. I can report back to see whether or not there's been any progress and what the State Department of Education is doing or if they're going in any particular direction. But I think a minimum of three months at this point. Okay, thank you, Ms. Howie. Mm -hmm. Okay, the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must em emphasize that this is not a time to conduct business and there has not been, as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. Does anybody have anything they would like to, um, anything they would like to say? Okay, the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee I is just, scheduled for- Sorry, oh, I'm, I'm a sorry. little delayed. It's Ms. Delosky, okay. sorry. That's okay, um, sorry. So uh, thank you to Ms. Howie for your advice with tabling the artificial intelligence piece. Um, and of course, this is very complicated and we're all learning as we go. Um, are there any like resources? And I guess this would be kind of as we go along, like you're always great about passing along resources and thank you for always doing that. But certainly, any research or um, resources going forward would certainly help us all. Surely, and the White House um, and the Department of Ed do have uh, some very broad position papers about the use of AI in education. Um, so I can certainly make sure you have those. Uh, but yes, it seems as if the federal government at least has a different type of awareness of the effect and the impact this will have, uh, AI will have um, on the classroom, on the schoolhouse. Uh, obviously there are, not obviously, but there are quite a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of literature around the, the use of AI uh, equitably. Uh, that Happy was <laughs> sorry. That's addressed a bit in the executive order uh, but there's been um, a study group set up at Morgan State University specifically about making sure that AI is being used and can be used um, in an equitable fashion. So uh, there are resources coming up in the employment arena. EEOC has come up with some guidelines as well. And obviously we employ a lot of people. So those are some things we want to continue to look at. But as to what applies to the schoolhouse, the federal government um, at this point, the U.S. Department of Ed is um, leading the charge. Thank you. And you are always really great about passing things on to us, so thank you. Thank you. And I would just like to share that um, although this is more uh, at more of a national level and not the state level, there is a nonprofit, it's called AIEDU, and they presented at the conference um, and they had wonderful information about policy through curriculum for AI and um, I found it very helpful the presentation and they have lots of information on their website so that's also a resource you can reference. And you said that's AIEDU? Yes, the, so the website like, is AI, AIEDU.org. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments? Okay, the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for Monday, March 11th, 
2024 at 4 30 p.m. Because there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Have a Thank great you. evening. Thank you.